Coming up on Regarding Men, women rally to close the gender death gap. Not... Hey friends, welcome to Regarding Men, where we hold men in high regard and where red pill isolation comes to die. I'm Janice Fiamingo, and I'm joined by two good friends, my best friends in the men's rights movement, and they are Tom Golden of Men Are Good, Men Are Good, and Paul Elam of PaulElam.com. Yes, they are. <laughs> and we're talking today about the gender death gap. And uh, we're going to start by talking about an article that was published in the New York Times by a woman with the unlikely name of Julie Bossman. I wonder if she created that uh, title, for, uh, that name for herself. And uh, there's the title of the article, The Other Half of My Soul, Widows of COVID-19, bond over sudden loss. So uh, as the title suggests, this is an article about uh, women whose husbands have died um, from or with COVID-19 and their response to that loss. And um, I, well, as we'll get into when we discuss the article, it's maybe not as bad as it could have been, but I think it is a remarkable illustration of the manner in which men's pain, and in fact, in this case, the death of men is minimized in our culture, something we've talked about a lot, and the way in which women's pain, or in this case also, it seems inconvenience, frustration, a uh, sense of um, frustrated entitlement, uh, all of that is, is magnified. Uh, one would expect that this would be an article about the extraordinary fact of the greater death rate of men with COVID and uh, the horror of that, as well as about the, the, the widow's pain and loss and their mourning of these men. But I think when we get into it, one sees that it isn't actually about the former, the, the tragedy of, of men's deaths very much at all. And every time that is mentioned, which isn't very much, it's minimized in, in various ways. So we see once again, uh, really the, the extraordinary way in which um, the elite members of our culture really want to send the message that men's death doesn't matter that much and uh, that all of our um, empathy uh, and our concern should always go to women no matter what the circumstance. We've got the joke that runs in the men's rights movement about, you know, comet hits earth and destroys all life, women most affected. <laughs> and this is one of those cases um, written in spades, really. And then we're going to end by looking at a couple of charts that our good friend Mark Perry at the American Enterprise Institute, who does a lot of work about um, our, our massive denial about um, male sacrifice and um, you know male suffering. He's got a couple charts also about um, fatalities on, on the job and uh, the incredible disproportion of male to female fatalities that is, I bet most people don't know about and that is never an emphasis of public discussion. So, uh, so I think that's that's our um, that's going to be it for for today. It's a, a lot of pretty meaty stuff, actually. Uh, so maybe we should start looking at uh, at the article and and uh, look. We've got some paragraphs that we've yeah, we'll we've picked out. Pull some paragraphs. Let's see what we got. Yeah, so this is the beginning, I think. More than 340,000 people have died of the coronavirus in the United States. Men have died of the disease in larger numbers than women, a gender disparity that some researchers have suggested could be partly attributed 
to men's generally poorer health. That has left untold thousands of spouses suddenly widowed by the virus. And, and by the way, it's also left untold thousands of men suddenly dead by the virus, but that didn't seem to be in, uh, in, in the works for how we examine this problem. That's the truth. Crazy, crazy. Mm -hmm. Wow, I like you know. You would think that at least the first paragraph of an article like this would really focus on the men, and 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 what that has meant for men generally. Just the the incredible fact that, especially in that early like month or two of the virus hitting the United States, the deaths of men was significantly higher. I mean, it was yes. something like. 70% or even more of deaths were male deaths. And, and the, I mean, thing, you know, the thing that got me about this is that men's generally poorer health. Yeah. It's like they can blame men for dying more often, you know, and that's what they like to do. Oh, well, men take too many risks and men don't go to the doctor and men are not dealing with their feelings and men, la, 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 men, and da, 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 da. But yeah. damn, they say, oh. And if you remember, we saw this early on when the when the virus first emerged, especially in Europe and so many Italians were dying. They started talking a lot. In, and this is before we had information on exactly what complicating comorbidities did to take lives of individuals with COVID. The first speculations that you saw all across the media, well, men smoke more than women. Men do this more than women. Right. It's somehow behaviorally yeah. attributed to men. That's the reason they're really just killing themselves. So we just right. need to focus our attention on these poor forlorn women who have been left behind by this yeah. virus. If because the men, you did it to yourself. And if they yeah. do it to themselves, then they don't really deserve empathy. No, they don't deserve any empathy. We don't have to mourn them. We don't have to care about the fact that we're dead, that they're dead. We shouldn't, in fact, because it's their own fault. I mean, I, I yes. yeah, I remember that too. Like it was yep. shocking yep. how quickly that narrative kicked in. I remember seeing an interview with this woman, Carolyn. Uh, go now, I'm going to remember, forget her name. It's a weird Crea dad something. Remember we talked about her, and I think that that. Um, that discussion of ours got messed up technically and it never aired actually, but it was between her and that <laughs> other fellow, the genetics researcher, his name is uh, Sharon um, Mo Moalem. And he, he actually has a book out on the genetic superiority of women. He argues that it's solely because of women's double X chromosome, which gives them greater a greater immune response. Um, but the, this other woman, Carolyn, uh, I can't remember. I know Crea Dad is part of the. Uh, her, she's got a double. Carolyn's enough. She right away went to the blame, and she even mentioned that men don't wash their hands enough, and that right. that was the reason right. that they were dying in such greater numbers. You know, and absolutely oh, no emphasis. Like it was incredible. Turns out, like that's completely wrong. I, I've read right. studies now saying you don't get COVID nineteen from surfaces. They have no cases of people getting it from surfaces. Is that it's right? not that kind. Of, yeah, it's not that yeah. kind of a virus. So washing your hands is completely irrelevant. And and I mean, oh. I just, it, yeah, th that that idea that we, we right away, we go to blaming men for their own deaths yes. without yes. even knowing if that's actually the case. I, I just, it, that is it's flabbergasting. It's automatic. Yeah, it's, it's built in. It's gynocentrism on steroids. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. yeah, and and to, to think that even in that first paragraph, we have to right away go to the, the widows, that that's the real yes. issue here. That's where the pain is. Yeah. Yeah, it's like Hillary Clinton and, and, said. And she goes as far as to even float the idea that we, we should consider this the widow maker virus, uh, yeah. uh, that we identify its, uh, its characteristics by what it does to women, which is... Uh, interestingly, not a new phenomenon. If, if you look at uh, the types of heart attacks that men have, one of them, uh, when the left anterior descending artery of the heart gets clogged, it's called a widow maker. Um, 
That's, I think, directly from the gynocentrism of our culture. You don't need a feminist from that. Um, we, we start looking at the impact on women. The same thing in the right. forestry industry, trees that weaken because of rot and um, storm damage and have large branches that hang and, and tend to fall in wind. Those are called widow makers because uh -huh. we know it's not women out there chopping them down. Yeah. <laughs> it's men. And when they get killed, we created another widow boohoo. And we don't call yeah. them man killers. We call them widow makers. Mm -hmm. That's right. Yeah. 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 yeah absolutely unimaginable uh, in reverse. Something that was killing women in enormous numbers and the statement being made, geez, there's an awful lot of men out there who don't have their wives around to look after them anymore. Isn't that awful for the men? I, I cannot imagine such an article. And I can't imagine men actually participating in such an article right, either. I mean, right. you know, we have to we have to be careful in, in how we read the article in that I was tempted to blame a lot of the women that are interviewed for the article because of the way it did seem as if mainly right. their response was, poor me. Now, we don't know for sure that that's the entirety of what these women had to say. Uh, th it, this is probably this boss man woman writing the article, very selectively choosing the quotations that she wanted to create her story. It may not be that these women may have talked extensively about what wonderful men their husbands were, you know, and how terrible it is that they're gone, taken away so suddenly, and you know, all that kind of thing. That doesn't come across in the article because that wasn't the story that boss men wanted to tell. But I also have to say that I just cannot imagine a bunch of men gathering together and agreeing to be interviewed about for a story about their uh, stresses, their suddenly increased responsibilities, right. and their sense of anger at the world that you know they no longer have their wives around and that is the impression very strongly that comes through in this article it's about what's been done to these women not the the wonderful men that are gone now it's it's really uh, and, just and of course they, she, she points the lion's share of the blame directly at donald trump yeah, <laughs> we'll get to yeah, that. Yeah, we'll, we'll get to that one. Yeah, that's pretty incredible, too. Yeah, so let's, go to the let's next keep one? going. Yeah, we'll go to the next paragraph and see what comes up. Yeah, you want to read it, Tom? I'd be happy to. Women have witnessed the pandemic from a miserably close angle. They've been left behind with family responsibilities, financial burdens, worries about their children's trauma, and their own crushing loss and guilt. Many nursed their partners at home until they were so ill they had to be hospitalized. There, they often died with little warning. Coronavirus widows, as well as many widowers, are spread out across the country, young and old, in big cities in California and small towns in Utah. Hmm. Yeah. So there it is. Yeah. Hmm. Actually, what I've seen is the men die in the ICU without anyone there. No family, no nothing, because they're isolated because they've got the virus. And the family doesn't even get to go in. It's rare that the family gets to go in, you mm -hmm. know? And so yeah. I don't see women taking care of men at home. That's not what I've seen. I've seen men in the hospital and everyone staying away from them. Of course, the women too. I mean, that's the way it's working now. You know, even the ICUs now, the only people allowed into these rooms that, are, that people have COVID are the doctors, some nurses, and one uh, pastoral counselor you know, per hospital. That's what I've seen with, with different people I've talked to. So, you know, I think her assumption there is a little bit erroneous just to begin with. Well, I mean, they do talk about, um, you know, in, in some of the cases that, that they weren't sure when to go to the hospital and, you know, their husbands were getting sicker and, you know, then they had to make the decision for him to go to the hospital. And then it was horrible because they couldn't go in and, and, and see. And in a couple of cases, it's very moving um, where where the wives are, are talking about um, in one case, she was looking through her husband's phone and she found some pictures that he had taken of himself, right. Right. you know, with his Whatever all they alone. had, yeah, all alone. And they didn't and, and, talk about you know, his pain; they talked about her pain. 
Yeah, her guilt and her sense that if she'd been there, she might have been able to keep him alive. I thought that part was fair enough. I mean, it was horrible for I mean, and it must be horrible to be a family member left behind yes, who couldn't yes, even be absolutely. there at the bedside to hold their loved one's horrible hand indeed. and to comfort them in whatever way and to exchange words of love. I mean, it is awful. And and actually, there's a you know, there's some interesting discussion to be had. And I'm sure it has been had somewhere, but certainly not in this article about, you know, whether that is really a humane response to this virus, whether people should be left to die alone. Really? Um, yeah, really? I mean, it, to me, it, it's 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 really shocking and it's not clear that there's an actual scientific rationale for it at all. But, uh, you know, that doesn't come up here. And and. Uh, yeah, mainly though it is, you know, I mean, that, that list there in the second sentence, um, right. and even the first sentence that they've witnessed the pandemic from a miserably close angle. I don't know even what that means really. Like again, it, it's just this, this determination that this has to be all about the women. And then, you know, that list of things they've been left behind with family responsibilities. Well, of course they have. I mean, I don't even like, what's the point of that financial burdens worries about their children's trauma I, I just of course you know this is what happens when family members die the, the notion that this is somehow and i i know maybe i'm exaggerating slightly but there is a whiff of that this is a patriarchal plot against the women yes you know that is implied. You know, and it, this expectation that women should be spared all suffering that if we aren't able to provide women with absolute security at every stage of their lives, that they've been terribly failed by society, it's the implication throughout. And I just find it bizarre that, yes. you know, I, I thought women needed men like a fish needs a bicycle. I thought women were all, you know, achieving great, you know, independence and autonomy and suddenly now here they have these crushing responsibilities and crushing financial burdens I, I you know it, i don't know i mean I, this is obvious what i'm well, saying but I, I just i find it awful selective points of view uh, that conflict with each other there is nothing new to feminist ideologues that's, that's yes of sure. course women have all this responsibility that they run families like there's no husband there they they've always had the burden of taking care of the family even though it's more commonly uh men that create the resources that take care of families still mm -hmm. uh, that's the case yeah. these days but for for feminists to talk about one side of their talk out of one side of their mouth about women's autonomy and freedom and then turn around and talk the other side about their dependence uh isn't anything new it's right. it's just par for the course this is right. what they've always done right and by the way you know somewhere between one and two million americans die every year of something yeah that's, that's been going that. on forever <clears throat> Yeah, it's yeah, almost 3 million, yeah. I think. It's 2.4, 2.5 million die every year. Yeah, yeah. Something, yeah, something like that. And I, I know that since COVID, we have set a record. I think I saw in the news just recently that there was a record number of deaths in the United States in 2020. Um, not by much, though. Yeah, not by much, but that doesn't surprise me. But again, what we're seeing here really is putting the lens of gender politics on every opportunity let's make this about women yep. yeah. and who knows you know probably if we can raise <laughs> enough awareness about what the surviving <laughs> the women that get to keep their lives what they're going through we can probably raise a bunch of money or tax people yeah. and give it to them <laughs> yeah yeah that's and, the and implication that's yes and you know to yeah. to look at this rationally we have to understand that 55% of the deaths have been men and 45% of the deaths have been women. So it's not like one of these jobs. It's more like one of these jobs, you know, where slightly more men have died than women. And they're making it sound like it's all about the women who are left. You know, how about the men who are left? What the yeah, hell? Yeah, well, they do mention the widowers in a little uh, subordinate phrase there, as well as many widowers, you know, but but you, you can bet there would never be an article about them. 
And if right. there were an article about men, it would be a very different type of article. I just cannot imagine this level of, of wallowing in self-pity by the men. The men would be talking about the, the wonderful women yes. that they have lost. Yes. They would be memorializing exactly, those women. Yes. And yes. although there was a little bit of that, and again, maybe those women did speak about those That's things and it never made it into the article. So yes. I don't mean anything against these women. I'm just talking about the sort of fictional characters that have been created by Julie Bossman. But that is not the emphasis of the article by a long shot. There's a little bit in there about one woman who gets up in the morning and she tries to get out of bed. I mean, it's very touching, actually. She tries to get out of bed quietly so she doesn't disturb her husband because she's in, when, in that moment of waking and getting up. She still imagines he might be there and then she realizes yes. he's not. So every day she has to remind herself. And that's, yeah, it's, it's really It is very, painful. Yeah, but it's it, painful it's for wonderful. both men and women, and they talk about exactly. women's pain, but not men's. And, and I just think there's something so crass in <sighs> the conflation of that and all this other stuff about, you know, how the women have been, you know, all the burdens on the women, you know, that that it, it, there, it, it has no place in an article honoring loss, if that's what this was going to be otherwise yeah. to politicize it in this way as as paul says to to make it almost as if society needs to do stuff we need to raise money so that we, these women will not have any burdens at all um you know it, it's it's i i find it grotesque yeah and i have to admit something here you know i worked with grieving people for you know 35 40 years and so <clears throat> I'm loaded for bear with this article because I saw for that length of time how women would get compassion and men would get yeah. jack shit, you know? <laughs> so a part of me is just ready to blow holes in anything because I've seen this over and over and over again for years and years. You know, the women, how are you? What can we do to help? What's, what's yeah. wrong? La, la, la. And the men, how's your wife holding up? You know, it's like, oh, God. No Over. kidding. No kidding, man. I'm, t I'm telling you. that's. I know. I saw it. I mean, it, it's so yeah. clear. And the men just sort of smile at it and go, what the hell? You know? I don't think anybody in this discussion either is a stranger to the idea that what you say to mainstream reporters and journalists and what they <laughs> write are two very different things. It's I'm so true. Sure that there are many of those women who truly miss the companionship right, and the love of their husbands and the yeah. world of the fathers and the family that and, and the stabilizing influence of that and they really need that but that will never in the mainstream today that'll never get written about right right it's It'll a good never, point never really be touched that's a good point yeah yeah, yeah. let's keep going keep going let's see if i can get the right one here Shall I read yeah, this? Read one? it up, Paul. Please. A report published in May by the Gro Global Fund for Widows. <laughs> yes. Sorry, I can't. <laughs> you spit that one out. The Global Fund for Widows, a nonprofit organization based in New York, called the coronavirus a widow making machine, an outbreak that could create unprecedented numbers of widows across the developing world. Um, yeah, of course, it, it uh, wouldn't create widows in the undeveloped world, whatever that means. <laughs> By late December, at least 163,000 men had died from the virus in the United States, compared with at least 138,000 women, according to federal data. No. Okay, well, this is more of the same. Yeah, the... Yep. This, yeah. this is the agenda. Yeah. And look at those yeah. numbers. That's 50, 54 percent men, forty six percent women. I think. So, and I think those numbers have. You've seen a correction because at the beginning, yeah. for instance, in the outset, yes. I know that yeah. upwards of seventy five percent of the the death toll in places like Italy were men. Yeah. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and of course, they were struggling to find a way to blame men for that happening. Yeah. <laughs> and, yes. And luckily, the the they I think with therapeutics that uh, there has been an evening out of that. They're saving a lot more lives than they were in the beginning. And so yeah. now we're seeing a little bit more uh, gender equity, but it's still by my measure, a lot more women need to die. In order to in reach order equality. To, yes, if yeah. we're going yeah. to have equality, 
we need to give women the assignment in life to risk all the exposure to the virus. They need to be mm -hmm. the ones going to the grocery stores, going to take care of errands out in the world where they might get exposed. And if they do that enough, we might see the gender death gap close. <laughs> what do you think? Yeah. Is that a great well, idea or what? It's only we fair, Paul. <laughs> we kept waiting for that, didn't we? In those early days when we were first learning about That's the virus right. and we fearing it that. and everything else, you know, um, and, and the reports coming out of China and Italy about upwards, of, you know, more than 70% of the deaths being male. We were waiting for the calls for women to protect men and for women to take on all the frontline stuff. <laughs> It never came there. I, I never saw, I never saw an article. I never saw a single article lamenting the horror of a virus that had that kind of a disproportionate death rate. I mean, it, right. it, it, it was, it, it never happened. I saw very mean spirited articles about how white men were the super spreaders of society because they were the ones who took risks and they were the ones who didn't wash their hands and you know all and they wouldn't wear masks and all those kinds of things so an, an awful lot of nasty stuff about that about blaming men both for their own deaths and then the more favored subject which came later risking others you know that you know, wanting people to die not caring if grandma got the virus from them because they spread it around um, but never never a single statement by anybody about the the shocking reality of of greater male vulnerability to that particular virus yeah yeah yep. we knew it but i mean we knew it wouldn't come indeed yeah so let's let's go next on. one it's yours janice Sarah S. Richardson, historian at Harvard, who directs its gender sci lab. I uh -oh. bet that churns out uh -oh. non-ideological and fact-based research, don't you? <laughs> Said men have died of the coronavirus in greater numbers in part because of its disproportionate effect on black men and by a surge in deaths of men early in the pandemic. I think the latter part of that is true. Even before the pandemic, she added, this is my favorite sentence of the entire essay. Even before the pandemic, she added, women were more likely to be widowed than men. How is that, that another way of saying that men are more likely to die, to die. than women? Yes. Oh, yeah, that's what they meant. I knew they meant something. Like that. that is the piece de resistance of gynocentrism in this ridiculous, disgusting, immoral article. Yeah, oh, yeah, poor women. They've always been more likely to be widowed. Well, was this is something Clinton that said that, that women were the real victims of war? She because... did indeed say that's it. That's what yeah. I was thinking. And, here it is. And why is it that women are more likely to be widowed? Well, because men die on average about four or five years earlier than than women do. Did I just say that right? Men and die yes, you did. four and they, or five years earlier than women do. And they die and, more often and earlier from almost every disease than women do. And we still three have or four more that are every known cause of death. I think other than childbirth complications or breast cancer. Or Alzheimer's. Uh, Alzheimer's, okay. Because there's not enough men left to get Alzheimer's. Yeah, by that point, <laughs> yes. yeah. Yes. Mm -hmm. They die before their, their minds go. Yep. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. Exactly. yeah. So, I mean, the, well, you know, again, like beating a dead horse perhaps to, to uh, go on about this for, for many of our viewers, but imagine putting it that way. Women are more likely to be widowed than men. I mean, again, this is, and I bet this is something that the average person, probably excluding our viewers, has no idea that men regularly die much early, earlier, that their average lifespan is shorter than women, and that that is not addressed. It is not a public health issue. If it were the other way around, we know that every Canadian throne speech, every presidential State of the Union address, you know, it would be mentioned as something that doctors are working on and we're going to put government funding into it to, to find out the causes and to come up with solutions. But no, here it is presented as a problem for women again. And I, that thing about black men, too. I mean, now that was the thing that just, you know, struck me again so much, especially um, in about May and June, reports started coming out 
that um, minority communities, especially black communities, were harder hit by the virus. Now, I don't know whether that ever panned out because that the story seemed to die in, in about May and June. I never heard much more about it. So I don't know whether that turned out to be to be true or not, uh, that black people, black men in particular, I guess, have died in, in disproportionately higher numbers. But certainly it was presented as a horrible thing. Uh, I remember Anthony Fauci was quoted as saying that, yeah, it was because of racism. That was always at least the implication, if not the overt statement, that it was because of systemic inequalities. And, and many uh, authorities stepped forward. Anthony Fauci was quoted as saying it was a heartbreaking reality. And I thought, what a bizarre situation we are in now, where if you are a black man, if your death is counted as a male death, nobody gives a damn and you are likely to be blamed for it. If your death is counted or considered as a black death, then it's heartbreaking, but only then. What a screwed up society we live really? in, that that's that the, the reality of All public crazy. response. Crazy, and the crazy. only way that we, we can talk about the, exp the negative impact on men is to qualify them with something else, either by yeah. race or sexuality or gender preference or, or, or whatever. But if you're just a male, you're done. Yeah. Then nobody yeah. cares. That's it. So we have to add something like skin color in, in order to allow people to acknowledge and recognize that some folks are higher risk, that some males are higher risk. Uh, it, it's, it's pretty disgusting. And I think there is, I think there was some truth to that. I know that in the black community, right. that there are more issues with blood pressure and other comorbidities uh, that, that happen, diabetes, it is proportionally more prevalent in black communities than it is in, in white communities. But we're not talking about such a difference that we would need to divide anybody by race. It's right. men that are from this. Yes. Yeah. And I would just add one thing for the black men. Make sure you're taking your vitamin D3. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Because they know now that D3 is really helpful as far as COVID goes. Yeah. And that blacks in general are much less able to, to uh, what's it called, bring the D3 into the body system as are yeah. obese people. So check with your doc. Check the internet. Take a lot of D3 because this takes a lot to hurt you, you know. So, you know, it's something to think about to, to be safe. You know, people who are yeah, overweight. About many times more than the recommended daily allowance. Yeah, I think they said yeah. that the last one I saw said that it was three times the recommended daily dose should go out to anyone who's black or obese. Um, or it was maybe both of those together. But it's critical. It's so cheap and it's so easy. And it's also related to depression, guys. So if you're feeling depressed, if you've got seasonal affective disorder, take D3. Mm -hmm. And take the, find out what the maximum dosage is you can take and take that. You know, a lot of people I've talked to talk about 5,000 international units a day. But find out for yourself what's best for you. Yes, we need to help men live longer yes, so they don't and, leave widows behind. And to live happier mm -hmm. lives, too. You know, D3, D3, D3. Well, yeah, if, if they're happier lives, they're less likely to beat their women. So we have to really smoke them. <laughs> Oh, God. Yeah. Ain't yeah. it the truth? Always, well, always get that guy on that's the centric spin on it. That's yeah. the angle. <laughs> yeah. Elam's going for mm -hmm. the angle. Next one. <laughs> yeah. All right. Let's see what we got. She pointed to President Trump and his downplaying of the coronavirus crisis, especially early on when her husband became sick. It's difficult to see people in her community still shunning masks and ignoring advice on safety and social distancing. Imagine the pandemic and losing someone to it and then doing it alone, Ms. Vaughn said. I'll never have peace and closure on the death of my husband. It should never have happened. So she's blaming it's Donald not Trump. It's Trump's fault. It's all Trump's yeah. fault. Everything's Trump's fault. Yes, all. because early in the pandemic, he <laughs> took them so, so casually, he didn't care so much that he shut down international travel against mm -hmm. the advice of everybody around him who wasn't making a big deal of it 
But let's not. And uh, that's why that's why Pelosi was in Chinatown having ice cream with all the Chinese people, saying it's fine to go out and be with people, especially yeah, Chinese that's people. The <laughs> and she can't, you know, she should be saying, "Wait a minute, Pelosi did this." <laughs> yeah, well, you know, yeah. yeah, and 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 what's significant too, I think, is if I'm remembering correctly, I think this may be the final paragraphs of the essay. I think or this very, was the last very, thing. Yeah, I think those are the last yeah. two. Um, you know, so so this was again, and who knows? You know, I give this woman her grief. Maybe she's just super angry and she's lashing out, and and right. you know, okay, so that that uh, she might change her mind in time. Right now, she feels that that nothing can ever console her, and she's looking for somebody to blame. Um, but you know, the, again, the the choice by Julie Bossman to put this at the end of the of the article is again a totally unnecessary and unethical politicizing of this tragedy so i guess there were no trump supporters amongst the women that she interviewed probably not and certainly you know they wouldn't if they had expressed gratitude to the trump administration for attempting to uh, you know work up a, vi a vaccine or whatever you know that people might have said that wouldn't have made it into the article obviously but just this uh, and and uh, you know to turn it into again a politicized cause is is yeah you know and we're supposed to we're supposed to suspend all of our rational faculties i suppose we're not allowed to question mask mandates or any of the other restrictive measures that have been enforced uh, and which seem to have done nothing for a state the state of california for example um where small businesses are being driven out of existence and the case numbers keep going up regardless of, of what they seem to do about it. Yeah. Um, but we're supposed to suspend our rational faculties because this woman lost her husband and is angry about it. Um, you know, it, it's, it's again, um, uh, you know, a, a really irrational and unhelpful way of, um, you know, discussing uh, the, the reality of death. Yep. And whatever you and do, don't question the boss man. She will get closure on this. This is part of the grieving process. People often immediately look for something or somebody to blame when they experience a significant loss. It's part of the process. Uh, boy, how how much more convenient could Donald Trump possibly be? Yes. Yeah. Indeed, yeah. he is. Should we go to Perry? Yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. Let's go to Perry. Let's see what he's going to say. Yeah. And this is a chart from uh, Mark Perry, who did this wonderful article. I'd, I'd like us someday to do a regarding men on his entire article, but this is just one little piece of it about the dangerous jobs uh, that men have in the occupations and uh, the percents mm -hmm. of men who die on the job versus the percents of women who die on the job. And I don't hear anyone really complaining about this. Do you guys? Yeah. Yeah. This is this is you know this is not the result of some extraordinary thing that struck the United States as well as everywhere else in the world, uh, and people didn't know what to do, and it wasn't clear the severity of the virus, and it wasn't clear what measures should be taken, and uh, you know this isn't something extraordinary like that. This is just the year to year century to century reality of how men and women's tasks in the world have generally been divided up and they are divided up such that men die in far greater numbers every year just because of the work they do. And mm -hmm. we never talk about it. I bet again, most people would, if you said how many men die on the job every year and what's the proportion of men to women, nobody would know. And it's a lot. It's a 11 to 1, uh, Mark Perry has found. Right. And that's just ongoing. And um, yeah, there's, there's Can very you little imagine discussion if it was about reversed? it. Yeah, we know it would yeah, be think, again. It's an important point to make. Uh, I mean, I often say in jest, would, for instance, we need to uh, populate the commercial fishing industry with only women until the, mm -hmm. the death gap is caught up on. I don't mean that at all, literally. This is what, what we're looking at Why with not? this chart. This is, what, this is what men do. This is what it takes to run the world. And if you look down the list of those pr professions, there's only one or two that, that it, any average woman would be capable of doing 
right. to begin with. This is why that, that these are so male dominated professions. Women can't do it, don't want to do it, whatever. And of course, I, I'm fine with that. I'm, and I'm, I'm much happier, honestly, with men taking their care of these professions, because that's how things get done. It makes everybody's yes, life more beautiful. Of course. But instead of being grateful for the sacrifice men make, that's people look at it and say, oh, these men, they're taking risks. No wonder they're dead. Well, yeah, oh, God. And, and they should yeah. be honored. Men should be honored of for course. the fact that they take these risks for society. That's what bothers me more than anything yes. else. But, yes. but as we saw with the COVID article, and we've seen a thousand other times before, People, particularly in the media, will look at that information in that chart and say, "Well, yeah, this is what this is what men do unnecessarily. They don't wash their hands. They didn't wear their safety gear. Um, uh, they they want to be John Wayne, so they're taking all these risks. It's the macho part of toxic masculinity that's at play here. Just anything other than saying, wow, can you believe the sacrifice that all these people make so that we can eat and we can have roofs over our heads and, and we can have medicines and medical treatment and everything else that goes on. And it, it would be nice if they would just cut this bullshit and, and just do what we used to do, which was to look at these things with respect. Yeah. Yep. Yeah. I'm not holding my breath. No, I'm not no, either. And you know, Oh, sorry, Paul, go on. I was somebody who did one of these professions, driving a truck, before I can tell you it's a very dangerous profession. And I can tell you something else. For the most part, wherever you go, people treat you like shit. Yep. And it's Paul amazing. has some good yeah. stories about his truck driving years. If you ever have lunch with him, you should ask him. Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, you know, and I, I suspect that the vast majority of men who do this kind of work aren't even that interested in, in you know, specifically being thanked for the work they do. Um, well, my, my dad was a commercial fisherman uh, and his brother died um, at, at the age of 17 uh, on a fishing boat. And wow. uh, well, I never heard my dad talk about that. And he didn't expect, you know, to be held up as a sacred victim or anything like that, or even wow. to be particularly honored for the fact that that was the way he chose to make his living. He loved it and enjoyed doing it. His father had done it before him in Croatia and then did it when he when he immigrated to Vancouver and and um, you know my dad didn't see himself as a hero for that but you know I think most men would just like to to uh, you know for the crap to stop yes uh, if, to stop being blamed for what a minority of men do wrong and to be just generally recognized for the contributions overall that men make to keeping our societies going and to making them flourish. Uh, you know, like Mark Perry says, you know, it's good to have men in the world doing all this stuff, doing what men do, doing the work that men do. Yes. And my, exactly. wow, what a difference it would make if we just acknowledged that and stopped pretending that men are the source of evil and only the source of evil. Yeah. Wow. Uh, you know, it, it's just incredible that this is the reality of what men bring to the world. And it's yes. great to have men here. Yep. Indeed. Should we go to the next chart? Yeah, let's look at that last one. Yeah. So there just, it is. There's the totals. <laughs> yeah. For anyone interested, the blue bar is the males and the burgundy bar is the females. Hmm. Yeah, 11 point. <laughs> yeah, you guessed it, yeah. Captain and there it is, 11.2 to one. And that's in the year 2019. Yeah. So, and it, Perry has a, a, a write up with this chart. He does this kind of thing all the time. Um, I think, you know, he just spends He's so great. much of his life working out all this stuff with He's numbers great. and and, uh, and then presenting what it means from a non gynocentric perspective. And he says, you know, it would take, I think he said till the year 2000, 2030, yeah, it would take to that year, if men stopped working all together, <laughs> you imagine that, that'd be great, eh? And men stopped working all together and women worked and took over all those jobs. 
Uh, well, no, I guess that, that wouldn't quite work. But anyway, if women just kept working at the jobs they do, it would take to 2030 before they evened the occupational fatality gap. Right, right. So and if we're going to talk... That's assuming that the human race would survive yeah, that long. Well, it wouldn't. Let's, <laughs> let's, let's face it. Exactly. <laughs> You know, and so, you know, and, and, you know, and it does, it infuriates me when, when we think about the fact that this is ignored. If we're going to talk about equality, come on, let's really talk about equality then. You want this, women? You want equality? This is what it looks like. And, it, you know, it's such a lie to go on and on about the gender pay gap and not mention this gap. Oh, boy. Yes, equality found in blistered hands and and battered bodies yeah. and and early death. There's your yeah. equality. If you want if you really want equality, quit talking shit about wanting equality when you do not mean it. Yeah. Yeah, really. Yeah. Equality yeah, would be a course... step down for women. Well, it would yes, be. It would. it would be. You have a fantastic video on that topic. I love that you little talk video. About which, what equ- and it came from Paul's ideas, actually. That video was uh, Paul's baby, and I just put it onto onto video. But we'll it's link that one below. Video. Yeah, link. Let's link yeah, it because <laughs> it, that you know it is so <laughs> true. And and yeah. to talk about the the even to talk about the fatality, the occupational fatality uh, gender gap, isn't even to to talk about as as Paul is just indicating the reality of the uh, really um, body destroying work that men do even if they don't die on the job it affects men they end up with crippled bodies with reduced capacity with disabilities of various sorts solely for the kind of work that they've put their lives into doing i mean all of that that is the reality of gender difference in our societies And the fact that it's never talked about means that our understanding of social norms and realities is so totally skewed and, you know, and gives women this false sense that they've been done wrong and that, you know, that they're entitled to some kind of recompense. And it's just not true. Yeah, that's how we get unfortunately a a good number of women who think they deserve accolades every time they tie their shoes without assistance and to me it's embarrassing for them um it 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 really is and it's unfortunate but uh again ladies i want to reiterate i don't wish harm on any human being ever but i'm sick of a society that has this make-believe idea of what equality is, like like rights and responsibilities are on a smorgasbord, and yeah. women can go through and skim and pick and choose what they want, and then say, "Look at me, I'm equal." No, you're not. <laughs> you're just yeah. not. Yeah. Is that a good well, that place to end? Know. <laughs> that's a good place to end. <laughs> Indeed. Okay. Good stuff. Well, I'm, well, I'm going to go later. first. <laughs> She's predicting it. Men are good. How about that? All right, there we are. <laughs> well, we'll, we'll have to record that one. We did that right. We'll have to record that one. Indeed. <laughs> so come and see us on regardingmen.com and uh, regardingmen.com slash join to join us. I'm telling you, really good things are happening there with men just connecting with other men all over the world. It's amazing. It's really it's amazing. It's amazing. It's how guys talk when they don't have to look over their shoulder. No shit. Yeah. When they know they're around people who you know are going to accept them the way they are, kaboom. It's just, it's a wonderful thing. It's a beautiful thing. So That's join us, guys. Thing. Join us. And uh, we're finished? And Happy New are. Year. Happy Happy New Year and disregard the message about Christmas Eve. (laughs) We'll see you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.